so I have realized that I don't even know who the fuck I am anymore. Oh, by the way, I'm still alive and still posting. Honestly, I don't even know why I still bother posting. It's not like any of this shit matters. I keep spilling my guts to strangers on the internet like it's supposed to help. Does it make me feel better? Fuck if I know. I guess it's better than sitting in the dark, listening to the whispers, waiting for the next thing to happen. I mean, I'm freezing to death in my own home, and that thing is always there, just watching me. You want to know something? I don't think I've slept in days, or weeks. I don't know. Time means nothing now. It's all a blur. I don't even remember what normal feels like. My mind is slipping. I can feel it unraveling piece by piece, and I don't care anymore. Let it unravel. Let it fall apart. I saw Richard die. His body still in my head, twisted, broken, covered in blood. The boy did it. No, that's not right. It was the woman who did it. But I can't get it out of my head, the way his eyes stared up at me like he knew something I didn't. Like he saw something in that final moment that I was not ready to see yet. And maybe I never will be. Maybe I'll die without understanding any of this. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. I haven't been able to leave the house since it happened. The police took Richard's body away, they questioned me, and I lied. Of course I fucking lied. What was I supposed to say? That a kid killed him because he's possessed by some goddamn demon woman who's been haunting my house for weeks. They'd lock me up. Maybe they should have. Maybe that would have been better than this. But I lied, and they believed me. They thought it was an accident. I made it sound like a tragic, terrible accident. And now Richard's dead, and it's on me. His blood is on my hands, and it's not coming off. After the police left, I thought I could pull myself together. I thought I could maybe find a way out of this mess. But the second I was alone, the house came alive again. The whispers came back. The cold, the shadows, the feeling that something's always right behind me, breathing down my neck. And the boy, he just sits there. He's quiet now, too quiet. Like he's waiting for something. Or maybe I'm the one waiting. I just don't know. I haven't been able to look at him the same since Richard died. Every time I see his face, I remember those black eyes, that twisted smile. And the worst part, he doesn't even seem to remember what happened. Or maybe he does, and he's just fucking with me. I can't tell anymore. I don't trust him. I don't trust anyone. Yesterday, or at least I think it was yesterday, I finally snapped. I don't even remember what set me off. Maybe it was the way the boy was sitting there, staring at the wall, completely emotionless. Maybe it was the whispers, the constant fucking whispers that never leave me alone. Or maybe it was just the weight of everything that's happened, pressing down on me, suffocating me, until I couldn't take it anymore. I grabbed him. I fucking grabbed him by the shoulders and shook him, harder than I should have. I don't know what I expected to happen. Maybe I thought I could shake the demon out of him, or get him to say something, anything, that would make this all make sense. But he didn't react. He just stared at me with those big, empty eyes, like he wasn't even there. Like he's not even real anymore. I screamed at him. I don't even know what I said. Something about Richard, about the blood, about the whispers. I don't know. It was all a blur. And the whole time, he just stared at me, silent, unmoving. And then, out of nowhere, he smiled. That fucking smile. It was the same smile he had when Richard died. The same twisted grin that stretched across his face like someone was pulling his skin too tight. And I knew, right then and there, that he wasn't the boy anymore. He hasn't been the boy for a long time. He's just something else now. Something wearing his skin, using him like a puppet. 
I let go of him and backed away, my hands shaking. I couldn't breathe. I felt like I was going to pass out. The room started spinning, and I had to sit down before I collapsed. I couldn't even look at him. I couldn't stand to see that smile, those black eyes staring back at me. After that, everything went dark. I don't remember what happened next. Maybe I blacked out. Maybe I just lost time. It's been happening a lot lately. I'll wake up in the middle of the night, covered in sweat, my heart pounding, and I won't remember how I got there. I won't remember what I dreamed about. But I know it's always the same. It's always her. She's everywhere now. I see her in the shadows, in the corners of my vision. I hear her voice in the back of my mind, whispering things I can't quite make out. And the boy? He's just sitting there, waiting for something. I don't know what, but I know it's coming. I can feel it in my bones. Something's coming, and when it gets here, there won't be anything left of me, or him, or this house, or anything. There was a moment, a few nights ago, at least I think it was a few nights ago, when I thought I could leave. I thought I could just walk out the door, leave everything behind, and never look back. I even packed a bag. I grabbed my keys, opened the front door, and stepped outside. But the second I crossed that threshold, the air changed drastically. It was like walking into a wall of ice. The cold hit me so hard, I could barely move. And then I heard the sound of her voice. It wasn't the whispers, but something else. Something louder, angrier. It was coming from inside the house, from behind me. I turned around and I saw her. She was standing in the doorway, staring at me. Her face was twisted, contorted into something inhuman, something monstrous. Her eyes were black, like the boys, but there was something behind them. Something ancient, something hungry. She didn't say anything. She didn't need to. Her presence was enough. It was like she was daring me to leave daring me to try and escape. I couldn't do it. I couldn't leave. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm already too far gone. Maybe it's because I'm already hers. I closed the door and went back inside. Since then, I haven't left the house. I can't. I'm trapped here with her and the boy and the walls are closing in. The whispers are louder now almost deafening. They're in every room, every hallway, even in my own head. I can't think straight. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I just sit here, waiting for whatever comes next. I tried calling for help. I tried reaching out to someone, anyone, but no one answered. The phone doesn't work. The internet barely works. It's like I'm cut off from the world, like this house exists in its own little pocket of reality separate from everything else. And I think that's exactly what she wants. She's isolating me, keeping me here until there's nothing left. The boy barely speaks anymore. When he does, it's always the same chant. She's here, she's waiting, she's not fucking leaving. I don't even know who he's talking to. Me, her, himself, it doesn't matter. None of it matters anymore. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about Richard. About the way he looked when I found him. About the blood, the way it soaked into the carpet, the way it clung to my hands when I tried to move him. I keep seeing his face, staring up at me with those dead eyes like he was trying to tell me something. But the thing is, I think he knew. I think he knew what was happening long before I did. I think he knew she was coming for him, and he came here anyway. Maybe he thought he could stop it. Maybe he thought he could help me. But he was wrong. And now he's dead, and I'm still here. Why? Why the fuck am I still here? Why didn't she take me too? What's the point of any of this? I don't have answers. I don't have anything. All I know is that I'm not the same person I was before. I'm not the man who adopted that boy. I'm not the man who tried to figure all of this out. 
I'm something else now. Something broken. Something twisted. Something that is hers. I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know how this ends. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'll just keep posting, keep typing these words into the void until there's nothing left to say. Or maybe this is the last post. Maybe this is the last time you'll hear from me. I don't care anymore. I don't care about anything. The boy, the house, the whispers, her. It's all the same now. It's all one big nightmare that I can't wake up from. Sorry if this sounded more like a madman's rant, but I'm just tired. I'm just so fucking tired. And I don't know how to make it all stop. For more chilling stories, like and subscribe.